Now that we've learned a bit about the energy organelles, let's talk about the support and movement of the eukaryotic cell. Plant cells have their cell walls, but animal cells don't. So let's talk a bit about the internal structure of the animal cells. They have something known as the cytoskeleton. The prefix cyto simply means cell. So the cytoskeleton is the skeleton of the cell. And this cytoskeleton does for the cell what our skeleton does for us. It gives the cell its shape. It provides internal structure. And it also is responsible for movement of the cell. The cytoskeleton is composed of three different types of protein fibers. The first of these that we'll talk about are the microtubules. They are the thickest of the cytoskeletal fibers. They are a helical polymer of tubulin monomers. These microtubules grow or shrink by adding or losing monomers. The microtubules are organized by the centrosome. The centrosome is a structure within the cytoplasm that coordinates the microtubules of the cell. Now we see here in this image both an illustration but also a microscopic image of human cells that have been stained to show their microtubules. So even though they look somewhat like starbursts or, or maybe even tangled pieces of yarn, what we see stained here are the microtubules of these cells. And we can see that they go from a, a central portion, that's where the centrosome is, out to the boundaries of the cell. In fact, if we zoom in a bit closer, we can see that these microtubules are actually used as highways within the cells, where little vesicles are transported, where little vesicles use the microtubules as a way to get from one part of the cell to the other. Now it's not easy to see in this image, but there's actually a specific type of protein known as dynein feet that actually walk and move pulling the vesicle along these microtubules. So they really are little highways or roadways within the cell itself. The next two type of cytoskeletal elements are the intermediate filaments, and the microfilaments. As their name suggests, the intermediate filaments are intermediate in thickness. They're thinner than the microtubules, but thicker than the microfilaments, and they help provide structural support within the cell. The microfilaments have the thinnest diameter of all the cytoskeletal elements. They are made out of the protein actin, and they're in these thin threads that intersperse often throughout the plasma membrane of the cell. If the cell moves its plasma membrane, whether to, to crawl or even just to surround a food particle, the extensions of that plasma membrane are known as pseudopods, and the formation of pseudopods are the result of the microfilaments. So pseudopodia project forward and pull the cell. This is how an amoeba moves. Now not all movement of eukaryotic cells is through stretching or movement of the plasma membrane. Some eukaryotic cells also have these modal appendages that are made up of microtubules. If there are many of these modal appendages and they move in a synchronized manner, we call them cilia. And if there's a smaller number of these, one, two, maybe even up to eight or so, um, but which are longer and they move with these whip-like movements, we call those flagella. So some organisms are just covered with cilia. In fact, some organisms are referred to as ciliates, whereas a cell that 
uses a flagellum to swim, an example of this would be a human sperm cell. Whether we're talking about cilia or flagella, when we look at a cross-section of these modal structures, we see that there are pairs of microtubules that are next to each other, and it's these microtubules that provide the rigidity, but also the flexibility to the cilia. Notice also how these pairs of microtubules have these dynein feet-like molecules adjacent to each other. It's as these feet step or move that the cilia or flagella will flex and move left or right. Now this is very different than the bacterial flagella, which instead of being flexible is in fact rigid, and instead of moving back and forth in a whip-like manner, instead it rotates like a propeller. So bacterial flagella are very different. from eukaryotic flagella. It's a rigid flagellum that rotates like a propeller. There's a specific motor protein that allows for the rotation of this flagella. In the next video, we're going to return to the boundaries of the cell, but in this case, we're going to look at how cells interact with their direct neighbors and also how they communicate with other distant cells. See you in the next video.